All right, Sukhasana. So does everyone have something to sit on top of? Okay, so cross your legs at mid-shins. So if you don't have yoga blankets, another good thing to use is like um, folded up towels, like bath towels, maybe beach towels, something that's large and thick that you can fold into uh, in half or in a square and kind of use as blankets to sit on top of. So that's an option Um, for blocks, textbooks or soup cans or, you know, larger fruit cans or something like that works too or back of your sofa, or a dining room chair, anything that you can fold and put your hands on if necessary. Okay, so seated uh, in Sukhasana with your legs crossed at your mid-shins. So again, take a look down at the center of your kneecaps. You want center of your kneecaps straight out in front of you towards the top edge of your mat. In other words, you don't want the center of your knees out at an angle here. You want them to tuck in and move straight out towards the top of your mat. Let's go ahead and turn the soles of our feet up so you can lean forward. Take your hands to your feet and you want to rotate the soles of your feet up towards the ceiling. While you're here, holding your hands to your feet, lift one sit bone at a time and draw the sitting bone back and then up towards the low back. Do that on both sides and then come seated. Maintain the weight of the front of your feet. Bring your fingertips into your blankets or into your mat or your block. Press and lift your side body. Spread your collarbone. Spread your arm bones. So your arm bones here extend out east and west. Tuck your shoulder blades into the back and open the chest. Bring your sacrum in. Bring your tailbone down. Bring your hands to your heart center. Namaskarasana. Close your eyes. Begin to center yourselves here using your breath. You want to bring your inner arms in towards your outer ribcage and then extend the tips of your elbows down towards your mat. Let's not bow our head just yet, but guys, rather keep your chin here parallel to the mat, even though your eyelids are closed. You begin your ujjayi breathing, and as you breathe, you want to move your inhalation out into your outer rib cage. And as you exhale the breath, empty the lungs completely. I'll chant Om. You guys can join in from home, or you're welcome to just listen. Exhale your breath. Keep your breastbone lifted towards your chin, but bring your chin towards the groove of your neck. Release your hands. Bring the hands to the tops of your legs. Center your head, and as you exhale the breath, you can slowly open your eyes and release your hand. Again, maintain the lift of your side rib cage here. Maintain the tops of your shoulders away from your ears. If you've got blocks, go ahead and grab one of your blocks. We'll shift forward, move up and over. So lift the side rib cage, open the chest, rather lead with your chest as you come forward. Take your block in your right hand. Push your block out to the left, to the right. So your block is in your left hand, guys, and you're going to push your block out to the right at an angle. Take your right fingertips into the mat and push your weight over towards your outer right left hip. You tuck your chin so you're moving over. You're twisting your spine slightly to the right. Your left arm is moving to the right. Your right elbow is bent. Your right fingertips push your weight to your left. Use your right fingertips to do that. And then grip your blocks and come back towards you. So watch. Going the other way, keeping the legs crossed the same way, watch. So the block is out at an angle, but you keep your torso in line. So in other words, don't lean. Keep your torso facing your legs. As you walk your right arm out, get lots of length in the back of your right arm. 
Bring your chin towards the groove of your neck. Left fingertips push your weight over to the right. Roll the back of your right rib cage down. So take your block in your right hand. Twist slightly to the left. Push your block out in front of you. Use the back of your upper arm. Good. Use the back of your upper arm as bring your torso forward. Bring your torso towards your inner left knee. There's a twist. Now, as you push your left fingertips into the mat, take the back of your right rib cage and roll it straight down towards your inner right knee. Grip your blocks and bring them back towards you. Let's uncross and whichever leg you had um, closest to you, bring that one further away, the furthest away. Again, move the buttock flesh, so lower buttock flesh out and draw back. This time you could take your two blocks in your hand and we'll push both of our blocks out in front of us. Once you get here and you've got your elbows straight and your arms very, very long, you want to bring your fingers together, press down into your blocks, rotate the inner eyes of your elbows up towards the ceiling. Bring the space between your shoulder blades in and down towards your mat. So your chest, your breastbone is moving towards your yoga mat. Open your chest. Move your breastbone towards your chin. Draw your outer feet down. Draw your outer hips down. And then as you exhale, grip your blocks and bring them back towards you. Perfect. Go ahead. We'll stretch our legs out in front. And rotate the flesh. So when you do that, you're rotating the lower buttock flesh out and back. Here, out. Draw back. Do that on both sides. If you need your strap for Paschimottanasana, grab your strap. Otherwise, you're going to inhale and take your arms up. Urdvahastasana. Exhale. Extend out forward. Stretch through your arms. Stretch through your fingertips. Wrap your hands around your feet. Or you can... Wrap your hands around your strap around your feet, but inhale, lift up, and exhale, bend the elbows out to the side, fold. So when you fold, don't round your spine, bring your spine in. So maybe your fold is here, but wind your elbows and pull against your feet with your strap. Pull into your feet with your strap. Press into the strap with your feet. Take your elbows deeper out to the side. Spread the front ribs, back rib cage. Lift the kneecaps, straighten the knees. Inhale, stretch up and exhale, release. Perfect. Go ahead and put your straps to the side. Let's come to the edge of our blankets. So just scoot to the edge of the blanket, front edge of your blankets with the lower buttock flesh. And then separate your feet and your legs some. Bend your left knee, guys, and bring the very top of your left foot on the mat. And I want your left knee to move straight out in front of you towards the top edge of your mat. This would not be straight out in front. So bring your left knee so that your outer left leg and your left knee face forward. Lean over to your left. Use your left hand. Put your weight to your left. Grab behind your right knee. Bring your right foot over and place your right foot firmly on the mat right outside of your left leg. Here. Take your left hand to your right outer knee. Draw in. Draw in. So everyone, take your left hand and bring it to the outer knee. Now draw the outer right leg in. Until you feel a lot of firmness in the inner part of your right foot. Take your left hand in an L, I mean your right hand in an L shape. Take it to your outer hip. Draw your outer right hip down towards your blankets, but also forward towards your left knee. Twist to your right. Keep holding your left hand to your knee. Keep taking an L shape to draw your outer right hip down over your right shoulder. And then exhale, bring your gaze back to the center. Keep your spine lifted and release. Stretch both of your legs out. You're still at the front edge of your mat. Separate again. And this time we'll bend the right knee and place the top of your right foot on the mat. And you want to bring your right knee cap forward here. So make sure that you're right at the edge with the lower buttock. Lean to the right. 
take your hand and you want to bring your left leg over. You see, so it's easy to do this, kind of let the foot do nothing. But we want to really put all of our weight in our left foot. So take both of your hands, draw your left knee in, lift your spine, move your torso forward towards your left femur bone. Now L shape with your left hand, draw down, lift the spine, twist to the left. Continue to draw your outer left leg in, twist to the right. Lift the spine, and as you exhale the breath, bring the gaze back to the center, perfect, and then exhale, release, stretch the legs out. Very good, and again, once more, you move the buttock flesh. Let's separate the feet. Again, separate the legs, hold behind your left knee, and let's bend our left knee and bring your left foot up so it's a fist distance from your blankets at your left foot. And then stretch your right leg out. Stretch your right leg out. So we don't want to sit here, guys. You want your sits bones to move back and up towards your low back. So as you bend your left knee, take your fingertips kind of to your blankets and see if you can shift your weight forward and just put a little bit of weight in your left foot. You kind of lift your bottom. Use your hands against your mat or your blanket. Shift forward, bringing your torso towards your leg, and then press with your left foot and lift your bottom. That's how much weight you want to have in your left foot, you see. So we're not going to let the left foot lose any weight here. Take your right fingertips outside of your right hip. Take your left arm up. Twist your spine to the right. Bend your left elbow. Hook the outer elbow into the inner left knee. Keep the foot firm. Twist to the right. So your fingertips on your right knee can go behind your back. Keep your right elbow bent. Keep pressing your outer left elbow into your inner left knee and use that resistance to twist to your right. And then exhale, release. So we're twisting to the right. So the left knee is bent. This is Marie Chiasson at one. So your left knee is bent, not your right knee. Okay. So we started with our left knee bent. Watch, watch once more. Left knee bend. Left arm up. Twist to the right hook. So that's just stage one of that. So now hold behind your right knee, bring your right foot in, and we have that same test. Fingertips here, press your left heel, shift forward, lift your bottom. Put your weight here in that right shin bone and right foot, and then come seated. Left fingertips to the blanket, right arm up, twist your spine. Use this outer part of your right arm to help you twist to the left, bend the elbow, hook it inside. Use Inner knee into the elbow, elbow into the knee, twist to the left, twist to the left, twist to the left. So we're just using the outer part of the elbow to start. This one is a bind. We just hadn't gotten there yet. Okay. And then as you exhale, bring your gaze back to the center and then release. Maybe you're going to need a strap for the next one. So if you do, if you can't bind here, you can take a strap and just make a small loop in the strap, okay? And then watch. Left knee goes up. Just watch for a moment. I'm at the edge, and I've got this weight in the left foot so that I can use the foot. I'm going to take the arm up, lean in a little bit further so the back of the armpit is here, and then I'll extend the left arm, bend the left elbow, wrap both arms behind the back, twist. Look over the right shoulder. Watch the right elbow. Extend down towards the mat with your hands, straightening your right elbow. Okay, so if you need a strap, if you can't bind that, you'll take your loop in your hand. And when you come here, left hand, wrap right behind, hook into your loop, lift your chest, keep working into your inner left knee at left foot, twist to your right. Okay, so strap or no strap, but you bend your left knee, put your left foot on the mat, come into the back of your left armpit, into your knee. Twist to your right. Twist to your right. So this is a twist to the right. If you can't bind, maybe use your strap. Everyone check on your inner left foot and ground your inner. Could you stand up on your left foot? 
That's how much weight you should have in your left foot. Gaze to the center and then release and switch sides. So again, you don't, when you come here, sometimes it ends up being this. You see, and when I take the knee all the way out, it, it really winds my body. I need more, and my arm needs to be longer because my knee's here, and that's creating more um, distance. So I have to roll in and really hug in in order to come here. Do y'all get it? So hug into the, in the armpit to the knee. So now you've got your right knee bent. Come in, hook the back of your arm, connect your fingers if possible, or hold your strap. Twist to your uh, left. Now, don't, don't let your chest go forward. This is a spinal twist. So this is not Marichiasana where we move our nose to our knee. It's Marichiasana where we twist our spine to the left. So work to open your chest, lift your chest, and twist to your left. Great. And then exhale to release. Very, very good, guys. Go ahead and we'll move our strap to the side. And if you don't have blocks, then maybe you just use your uh, the heels of your feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over onto the mat. And I've still got my little blanket here, and I do have a block. But I'm going to do this. Knees together in the front, internal, internal rotation. Then I'll bring my block behind me. I'm going to sit on top. So again, if you don't have a block, maybe sit directly on top of your heels or find phone books or textbooks or anything and, and make that work out. So watch. I'm going to lift one knee, take my hand to the front of that ankle, and I want to draw all the way back. I want to bring the heel back and then bring the knee down. So I'll do that on both sides so that my outer feet are perpendicular. You can take your hands to your heels, press down, lift your chest. Take your arms out in front of you, interlace your fingers right over left. Turn your palms out, firm your arms. So the backs of your arms, tuck in. Reach into your heels, inhale, take your arms up. Reach into your heels, though. Bring your heels directly behind you so that you're not uh, hyperextending your ankles. Palms of your hands up towards the ceiling. Interlace the fingers. Good. Sit on your prop. Sit on either your heels or sit on your block. Don't let your bottom lift. Great. And exhale, release. Perfect. Perfect. Come forward and tap your feet like this. Make sure your knees are together. Again, come to your toes. Lift one knee at a time. Watch. Lift the knee. Bring your hand to your heel. Draw your heel bone back. Do that on both sides. Lift the knee. Pull the heel bone back. Then press down. Press down. You're seated right on top of your prop. Take your arms out. Interlace maybe left index over the right. Press out through the palms of your hands. Back to your arms. And inhale. Take your arms up. Palms of your hands face me. Draw your heels back. Keep your knees grounded, your femur bones down, your shin bones up. Femur bones and shin bones clamp. Great. Press to the ceiling. Spread the thumbs. Great. And exhale to release. Perfect, guys. Perfect. Go ahead and come off of your block. You can put your block to the side. And again, go ahead and tap your feet. Now, let's sit on our right hip with our knees bent like this for our twist. And the first thing you're going to do, guys, you've got your knees bent and you've got your inner feet stacked right on top of each other. Your knees are out kind of to the side of you. Bring your hands in front of you on your mat. Begin to twist your torso so that your chest comes right over the front edge or the, the yoga mat. So maybe spread your arms, spread your hands, and use your hands. Press down. Move your chest towards your yoga mat. What it requires is that the back of this left rib, watch, come around here. And then draw forward. You can lift your right hip up, draw it down, twist towards the mat. Extend the right leg out, straight out to your side. Take the left leg back. 
Come on to the left toes and push through your left heel. Your elbows are straight. Lift your right hip up, draw it underneath you, pull your torso forward, twist to the right. You may be able to bring your left forearm down, but that doesn't mean you let your weight fall into your shoulder. So with your left forearm, if it's grounded, push and open your chest, twist. So you've got your right leg extended straight out to your side. Left leg is long. Left leg is behind you. Now use your left heel. What you guys to push through your left heel. Turn your chest to your yoga mat. Turn your chest straight down to your yoga mat. That's it. Great. Take the back of your left rib here and rotate it towards the mat or towards your inner knee, right knee. And then exhale, release. Release very slowly, guys. And then when you release, you'll come seated on your left hip. And it's your left outer hip, but your hip bone. So I hope you guys can kind of see. So watch. For now, if you look, hopefully you can see here, this hip, and you maybe be able to see by the pants, it's going up. The flesh is moving up. It's going this direction. I want, and you can see maybe my fingers here, I want this to come down, and then I want to pull forward to create space here. So your knees are bent, twist your spine towards your mat. So use your hands to twist to the, to the, towards the mat. So now you're seated on your left hip. Now extend your left leg out straight out to your left side. So look to see that it's straight out to your side, not here, but come right out equal to your outer hip bone. And then take the left leg back and use your heel most of all. Press back with your heel. Lift your left hip up, draw it down, pull your torso forward, twist to your left. You're going to use your forearm, your right forearm. You want to really use it to lift the chest, twist to the left. Pull forward, moving your torso forward to open up the bottom of your outer left hip. Twist to your left. If you want to use your forearm, use it. Don't, don't bring it down and then let your shoulder drop into it. You want to use it to press and lift your chest. Perfect. 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 And then exhale to release. Release. Okay, so go ahead and keep blocks, maybe and maybe not. Uh, but we're going to take blocks in the hands. And... And you may have them nearby so you don't have to stand up like I did. But, but y'all watch. We're going to come to the right side, which is the right knee bent in front. And I'm going to come into the lunge. And when I come into this lunge, I want to draw the outer foot, the outer shin, the outer knee, the outer hip. Watch. Back. Strong back. And at the same time, kind of pull the left foot forward. Do y'all see maybe a hugging the feet towards one another here. And so I'm going to take this lunge and then watch. I'm going to turn my right toes to the right. Right toes to the right. Left outer foot to the mat. And I've still got my left hand on the block. You don't have to, but you can. And I'm going to wiggle this left leg back. Pull my right hip back. Look over my right shoulder. Try to get that bottom left hip to come down. That's kind of the benefit of using the block. Okay. So come into a lunge. That's it. Take your lunge for a moment. Take your lunge for a moment. The lunge can really feel good on the back of your inner left leg. Your right leg is forward. Your right leg is forward, guys. Now, press down with your hands or your fingertips and do this. Draw energetically, pull your outer right foot back, pull your outer knee, pull your outer hip back. Now, push into your left heel. Keep your left hand grounded or on your block. Take your right hand to your hip, turn your right toes right, come onto your outer left foot. Come onto your outer left foot, right toes right, outer left foot on the mat. Left leg is long. Your left leg is long. You keep your left hand on the block or on the mat. Now, Draw your outer right hip back, but press into that inner right foot. Pull your hip back. Look to your right. 
look to your right, kind of open your chest up towards the ceiling. Now you can wiggle your, everyone take your left leg and take it further back and then see if you can slightly bend your left elbow and bring your left hip down, your outer left hip down, outer left hip down. Good, pull your outer right hip back. Great, and then come back to the center and switch sides, perfect, perfect. So come back to the center and now, and if you don't, if you're not using blocks, that's fine. It would be here, here. And then really, again, draw this entire area back like that and then push through your back heel. You keep your right hand down, left toes left, outer right foot down outer right foot down and then you've got to make some adjustments maybe wiggle that right leg back stay right over your outer right hip bone so you stay right over your outer right hip bone as you come here open your chest twist look to your left see if you can get your outer right hip to come down by making your right leg longer take your right leg back I see you, Dan. Very good. Good, 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 good. Twist your chest more so to the ceiling. Great. And then exhale to release. Perfect, guys. Go ahead and come down into Adho Mukha Varasana. So you've got your big toes together. Your knees are slightly apart. Draw your femur bones down here, your femur bones L-shaped like an external rotation. We're going to lead with the chest and walk your arms out. Keep your bottom attached to your heels. Keep your feet flat. So you want to keep the tops of your ankles grounded onto your mat. Tops of your ankles grounded onto your mat. Yeah. Front of your ankles grounded. Walk the arms out and get lots of space in your side ribs. Create space in your spine. You can think of keeping your um, sitting bones on your heels as your foundation, like you're grounding here in order to move forward and make more space in your spine. Tuck your chin so that the back of your neck has some space as well. And with an exhalation, you can bend the elbows and let your elbows rest. That's an exhalation. Very good, guys. And then go ahead and come up and we'll take a dog pose and then we'll go into another lunge and into pigeon pose. So. Um, that's coming. Um, so what you'll need is maybe blocks or blankets or something to support your hip. Hopefully you won't need it. Let's, let, let's see uh, how we're going to do this. So we've done it really recently. So y'all just watch for a moment. Wait, what did I say I was going to do before? Oh yeah, the lunch. So watch. We'll do this in stages. Maybe you need this and maybe you don't, but watch me. So again, I'm going to take a lunge, blocks or no blocks, right leg in front, just like I did before here. And I'm going to really kind of shift into the front and then press back, just trying to give this inner left leg, which is behind me, uh, some space here. And y'all just watch, 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 watch. So as I draw my outer right hip back, hug my left foot forward, I'm kind of squeezing my leg. I'm trying to exaggerate that so you can see how that's almost closing the front of my hips here. And then I'm going to bring my left knee down. We've done this recently. I'm going to bring my inner left thigh down, letting my left knee come down last. Here, use a blanket back there if you need to. And then from here, I'm going to come up, open the chest, and see how much I can bend my right knee like this. And maybe we come here okay so we're gonna start slow so blocks blanket back here if possible and then we'll do the pigeon pose okay blanket under the left knee if you if you need it blocks under your hands if you need it come into a lunge with your right leg in front that's it take your lunge for a moment that's great your chest comes up so even though you're lunging your your chest your breastbone moves up away from your your navel your navel moves away from your pubic bone. Good. 
Good, good. Now, everyone shift forward and then kind of press back into your left heel. Shift forward into your front knee and then push back into your left heel. Use your heel bone. And with an exhalation, begin to bring your inner left thigh down. Use your hands. Don't let your torso drop towards your leg. Keep moving your chest up, away from your right thigh bone. Let your left knee come down last. Not pigeon, guys, not pigeon. We're doing that other one first. So your left knee is down. Your right foot is still in front of you on the mat. That's it. Good. Now, flatten if you've got your left knee down. Flatten your left, so not here, but flatten your left foot like this and push into the mat with your left foot and your left shin bone. You've still got your hands on your blocks. Now, lean forward. Lean as much as you can into the front knee. So kind of shift your weight forward. Come to your fingertips. Watch my chest. Not here. Open up your chest. Open up your chest. Now press down with the top of your left foot. Press into the mat with your right foot. Let's take our arms in like a goal post here. Take the tips of your elbows forward. Exhale. Press your palms together. Straighten your elbows. Lean forward. Lean into your right foot. And then exhale. Take the arms out. Bring them down to the blocks. Take the back knee up. Great. And then switch sides. So step in now with your left leg. Step in now with your left leg into the lunge and take the lunge for a moment. Take the lunge. You can kind of shift into the front of your foot and then rock back into your right heel. Energetically hug your feet towards one another. Front foot pulls back. Your back foot moves up. You don't move your legs. You don't move your feet. You energetically pull towards one another. Good. Fingertips down. Open the chest. Remember the navel moves from the pubic bone. The breastbone moves from the navel. Good, good, good. Now, draw your shin bone back on your left side, your outer left foot back, and begin to bring your inner left, uh, right thigh down. So, again, we're not going here. Lead from the inner right growing Bringing your knee, your right knee down last, so take your time. You must use your left foot firmly. Kind of rock into your right heel. See if you can engage that inner right thigh as you drop the knee to the mat, but using the inner right thigh. So once the knee comes down, bring the top of your foot down. Bring your shin bone down. Good. Rotate your back hip forward. Come to your fingertips on your block. Come to your fingertips and lift the chest. Now, move in. Kind of let yourself do a little bit of a back bend. See if you can bend your left knee a little bit more. Good. Now, take your arms out and like a goal post here, take the tips of your elbows forward and then behind your ears as you press the palms together in Urtva Namaskarasana. Good. Open the chest. Lean back and bend the front knee. Great. Great, and exhale, release. Fingertips back down, or hands back down. Good, and then you can lift your back knee, and then let's step our right leg up one more time. Come into a lunge with your right knee now. Same thing, come into the lunge. You can shift forward, you can shift backwards, push through your back foot. Wonderful. Now we're going to do the same thing. Have your blankets nearby for pigeon pose. But we're going to let the inner left thigh come down first. Let your inner left thigh come to your mat first and your left knee last. Once you get here, flatten your left shin bone, flatten the top of your left foot. Now you can look this direction. I'm going to walk my right foot over kind of at an ankle towards the top hand, uh, left-hand side of my mat, like this. So not here like we normally do. Take it kind of out in front of you towards the top corner. And then take your left leg back. You can lift your left knee, take your left knee back, and then rotate your outer left hip and leg forward. So it's a little bit deeper than the regular pigeon. So unbend your right knee a little bit more. Unbend your right knee more. Take your right foot more towards the 
corner of your mat to the left. Do that. And now lean over uh, onto your outer left side. Rotate this part of your left side forward towards your right foot. Good. 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 Stay here. Stay here, guys. So we're here. <clears throat> yeah. Here. Hold on to your right foot. Lift your right outer knee up and pull back. So do this. Draw back from the outer knee to the outer hip. Take your left toes down. See if you can wiggle your left leg back a little bit deeper. Bring your left knee down. Bring the top of your left foot down. Now, take your right hand, left hand in front. Right arm behind you. Twist to the right. Don't lean forward. Open the chest up and roll the right arm back. Twist to the right. And then exhale, come back to the center and switch. Perfect. So if you needed block blankets, that's fine. But I don't want you guys leaning over onto your blanket with your outer right hip. So come into the lunge with your left leg in the lead. <clears throat> Very good. Take the lunge, kind of shift forward, and then rock into the back foot, which is now your right foot. Make sure you're using your right heel. Very good. Good, 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 good. Now we slowly start to let the inner part of the right leg come down first with your right knee coming down last. Lead here. Yeah, lead here. And I, I like what Esther's doing there because she's got, she's kind of going here. Just kind of really because you're leaving here. So you have to really try to open this area, maybe even warming the inner growing here in order to get that back knee to come down last here. And then walk the front foot, which is your left foot over, but towards the top edge of your yoga mat. So when your left foot comes over, it moves here, not here, but here. So try to direct it more towards the right hand side of your mat at the top, kind of at the, at the top edge and breathe and use your fingertips. That's it. Yeah. Breathe. I can't hear you guys, but I can see your facial expression. <laughs> So I know we're enjoying pigeon just as much as we always have. Okay, so now that you've got, maybe you've got that down here. Now, this right side wants to do this. That's what causes us to sit all the way over on that left hip. I want you to use this outer part of your right leg. Use your hands, maybe use your blocks. Watch. You lift up and you roll the right side down. Now, maybe you still have some space here that you can add a prop to, but don't do that. Roll more to your right. Roll more to your right. Use your blocks. Use your hands at your blocks or whatever you need to use to keep your weight over towards your back leg, not sitting on your front hip. Good. Once you get here, you can bring your toes down to the mat on your back leg, which is your right leg. Bring your toes down. Take your right knee up and take your right leg further behind you. Take your right leg further behind you. That's it. Now move the entire right side towards your front foot. Don't lean full. Bring your chest up. Now twist to your left. So you have to throw your left arm behind you and lean more so over to your right as you twist to your left. That's it. Good, 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 good. Great. Perfect. And then exhale, release. Wonderful. Go ahead. When you release, we'll take a dog pose here. Just put your hands out in front. Take your knees apart and back. And come up into dog pose. Dog pose. And you can kind of push with the heels of your hands. Bring your calves down. Bring your heels down. But you must draw your abdominal wall back. Have some space between your hands and your feet. 
if your heels are easily in contact with your mat, wiggle your legs back and then push with your hands. You guys can lift your fingertips as well. Your fingertips can lift. That's wonderful. Take your inner arches up. Good. Take your inner knees up. Take your inner thighs up and press your weight back into your outer legs, outer feet. Perfecto. Just a few more seconds here, guys. Excellent. And then exhale, come down and rest. So you can rest again in uh, Adho Mukha Varasana any way you want. If you want to come here, that's fine. Perfect. Rest there for a few moments. Ah, very good, guys. And go ahead and come up. And let's see what we can do. So what I think I'm going to do is roll a little bit of a blanket up, but you can roll the back edge of your yoga mat up and do that too. Um, so a little bit of a blanket or roll the back edge of your yoga mat. And this, this mat's kind of a, it's big. So I'm going to just do that. And if, you, if your mat is kind of thin or um, not very thick, so when you step on it, it kind of flattens, you'll roll a blanket behind it. So I've got part of the mat rolled up here. And I've got my blocks on top like this. And I'm going to step up with both feet to start here. And then I'm going to step the right foot forward. And I'm going to kind of roll into my mat and let my toes come down. Here. And then you'll do this. You'll stand for a moment. Your heel is elevated, your left heel, your outer right foot is drawing back, and your outer right hip is drawing back. And then I'll come up onto the toes, shift forward, pull the hip back, try to keep my weight over the hip, descend my back heel. And then from there, maybe we can fold those. Okay, so I should roll the other side of my mat up. All right, so you can roll your mat up, uh, the back edge of your mat. Or maybe if you don't have, you don't want to do that, use a blanket. But if you've got blocks, put your hands on your blocks. Step on your roll with both of your feet first. So step on your roll with both of your feet first. And then you're going to step your right foot down onto your mat. Do you get it? So you're on your roll. Here. Both feet. And then I'm going to step the right leg out in front of me. Get it out there, guys. Not, not this. And take a step out. Bring your right foot out in front of you. Take your blocks out in front of you. Come forward into your back toes, which are your left toes. So kind of roll forward and let the base of your right toes come down. Hands on your blocks. Press in four corners of your right foot. Draw your outer right foot back. Draw your outer right foot back. Your blocks can be as high as you need them to be. Straighten your right knee. Straighten your left knee. Roll to your back toes, left toes. Drop to the mat. Right leg is in front. Now, if you don't have a block there, guys, maybe you get your hands onto your mat or even bringing your hands to your shin bone, maybe, <clears throat> or in front of you. Now you've got here, let's come on to our tippy toes, left tippy toes, and I want you to shift your weight forward like this. So you're right over your outer hip. Keep your arms out in front of you. Now keep your weight right over your outer hip and descend your left heel. Kind of press back down into your left heel. Now bend your elbows. Press your hands, bend your elbows, and let your knuckles move down towards your right knee. So you can bend your elbows to do that. Nose to your right knee. If you can release your blocks, release your blocks. Maybe turn the backs of your hands onto the mat. Let your nose come to your knees, where your hips. Keep drawing your right hip back and your left hip forward. Good. Straighten both of your knees. Straighten both of your knees, especially the right knee. 
Good. Now, inhale, bring your hands onto your block, strain your elbows, look out in front of you. And then we can shift again forward and step our left leg forward and come up. Good. Great. Great, great, great. Keep your roll on your mat. Keep your blanket roll. I mean, keep your yoga mat roll behind you. Now step on again. Ugh, this is for me. Step on it again. Both feet. And now I've got left leg forward. Hands in front on the block. So again, don't go here, but get your left leg out there. Get it out there. Roll into your right toes. Press down with your toes. Let your right heel come up. Draw your outer left foot and your outer left hip back. Now come onto your tippy toes on your right side. Come up. So you're here. Come up. Draw your hip back. Now, stay here, right over torso, right over this hip, and try to descend your right heel. Now, bend your elbows and move your nose down to your knee, left knee. But stand on your prop behind you. Good. If you're not over that hip, go ahead and come back onto your right toes. Shift your weight right over your outer left hip. Draw it back. Bend. Remain there and descend the back cat, back heel. Great. Great, 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 great. Perfect. Your elbows can bend as you bring your nose down to your knee. Your hands can even come down to your mat. Here you can turn the backs of your hands onto the mat. Let your head relax. Let your shoulders relax. Perfect, though. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And then bring your hands out in front of you or bring them onto your blocks. Step your right leg forward. Perfecto. And then come up. Excelente. Ah, very, very good, guys. And you can stretch your yoga mats back out. And let's do either, uh, let's do, we can do headstand. Uh, like wall L with your feet to the wall. So if you can, if you know you can't get up, or you can face the wall or a wall or a door or anything like that, and take your sasana that way. You can also do legs up the wall. So if you're not if you're not going to do your sasana, maybe find a wall to take your legs into, or on your sofa or on your bed or in a dining room chair. Anywhere where you can elevate your legs, okay? So if you're going to do shirsasana, you use your blanket. Another option besides um, legs up the wall, guys, is parsarita, paratanasana, which is here. This is a, a, an option for uh, shirsasana or for any inversion. So parsarita, paratanasana can be substituted for shirsasana. Okay, or you can find your wall, and if you're if you're practicing, you don't use a wall. That's fine too. Blanket, palms of your hands up towards the ceiling, elbows right underneath your shoulders. So you can take your arms out and then draw in. So you kind of engage the flesh of your inner elbows. You interlace your fingers, fingers face you. Place the outer hands down, outer wrists, forearms, and elbows. Head comes down right on top of the mat. Cup the back of your head with your fingers, with your hand. You'll walk your feet up. Your knees are straight. You extend one leg up. You kind of reach into that leg that's going up. Once you get your legs up, put both of your heels on the wall. Tuck your bottom in. Move one heel at a time from the wall. Put all of your weight in the tips of your elbows. You can relax your legs. You can relax your feet. What you cannot relax are your outer wrists, your forms, and the tips of your elbows. Yeah, or what Esther's doing is feet on the wall. It's more like a, a, a wall L, except you're on your forms. You've still got the shirsasana hand thing. There you go, guys. Hold here a few more seconds. A few more seconds. Ah. 
few more seconds. Very good, guys. Okay, come down. And once you come down, you can stand on your feet and forward fold. And here you can let your arms and your hands relax. Yep. Mm -hmm. So just standing to fourfold to release the neck from sheer sauce and I could. Okay, since we're out, we're here and we're folded, stay here and stay folded. So even if you were legs up the wall or you did another variation for your version instead of Shirsasana, still come standing and we'll do um, Urdhva, um, Urdhva Parahasta. So we'll go here like we are here. Keep your knees straight. Lift one foot at a time. I'm going to lift the right foot and put the right hand underneath my right foot. And I got this knee bent here, and I'll let my head kind of hang. I'm still using my left fingertips here for support. Then I'm going to push down into the hands, straighten both of the knees, fold. And then I'll come out of that, and I'll move over to the left side, and then we'll see if we can do both at the same time. So right hand under the right foot, bring your toes all the way to your wrist. Shift your weight into the base of your right toe joint. You keep your knee bent. You can keep your right elbow bent. Now relax your head, relax your neck. Let your left fingertips be used as support and try to straighten your right knee. Good. Try to straighten your right knee. You're standing right on the palm of your right hand. Good. And then exhale, look in front, release, and go to the other side. So watch from the side. Maybe your knee doesn't straighten, and it's okay. You see here, elbow and knee are bent. I can be here. If I can do more, I'm going to try to keep that front rib at that left leg and straight. You see, so your knee can be bent, but get your hand under your foot. Your knee can be bent, your elbow can be bent, but get as much of your hand under that foot as you can. Good. Keep the knee bent as much as you need to. If you can straighten it, go ahead and straighten it. Just straighten the right knee. That's great. And then inhale, look out in front and release. Now we'll do both. Watch. One at a time. One at a time. And Typically, I'm here with my sitting bones kind of behind my heels. Where I want to go, I want you guys to watch as I want to come forward into my hands, and I'm using the, the base of my toes to press my uh, heels of my hands down, shift forward, straighten the knees, fold. Okay, so both hands at a time. Bend your knees to get the palms of your hands under your feet. Relax your head, roll the shoulders down, let your arm bones relax, and then slowly straighten your knee. That's it. That's great. Let your head relax, guys, and let your hands almost pull your, your feet, almost pull your arms. Do you see? So use your feet, press down. Head relax. Good. Great. And then you can look out in front and keep your hands here as you look forward. Shift forward. Now, release your hands both at the same time if possible, like here, here, and come up. Perfect. Wonderful, guys. And then you guys can come down, and we'll prepare for our back bend. So I'm just going to come down on the mat, and we'll do Setu Banda Sarvangasana if you've got a block. If you don't have a block, you can just kind of lie down, knees bent like this. And, you know, this is, if you don't have a block and you're here, maybe try to kind of take your arms up and over your head as you lift your bottom up like this. And then come back. That's if you don't have a block and you're just doing this on your own. If you have a block, come into support and set you bottom. So, toe, tippy toes down, 
bottom up, open the front of the hips, place the block right underneath the sacrum above the plumber's cleavage. Walk your feet forward, but make sure you're pressing your feet. Have enough space at your collarbone and the backs of your arms. Keep your abdominal wall moving towards the mat. If you're near a wall and you've got the space, you can straighten the knees and press both of your feet into the wall so the backs of your legs more parallel to the floor. That can be your pose. Yeah, that can be your pose. Straightening the knees or keeping the knees bent. Good. And if you're doing it without, again, you can kind of, uh, as you lift your bottom, let your arms go over your head. You can do that as well. Good. Great, great, great. Wonderful, God. Wonderful. You want to make sure your inner knees are even and they're rotating down. Your inner feet are even. They're pressing evenly into the mat. Good. Good. You don't want to let you don't want to externally rotate in a back bend. It's an internal rotation in a back bend. A few more seconds here. And then you guys can go ahead and come down. You can come tippy toes and lift the bottom up. And tuck your way down. Good. And then just remain resting on your mat. Your knees can be bent. If you want, you can bring your inner knees together and your feet a little bit wide. And hold here for a few moments. All right, guys, and go ahead, and you guys can roll over to your right and come up. And let's try Urdhva Dhanurasana, which is the full back bend. So I've got blocks here, but again, you may not have blocks, and that's going to be okay. Your blocks can be in a slant, especially if you have a baseboard. If you don't have a baseboard, maybe put them on a more solid uh, side here. If you're using the wall, your head comes right to the wall, right between your blocks, your hands go on your blocks. Watch this practice. There's a couple. Watch. I'm going to show you both. So the, if you don't have blocks and you don't have a wall or you don't have any of that, you know, another good thing is your, uh, well, anyway, I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm lying flat and I'm just going to practice putting my hands, bending my elbows and putting my hands, palms on the mat with the arms, inner arms in towards my ears like this. That's it. And that is not easy because sometimes this happens and the full hand is not pressing. Use your opposite hand, draw in and rotate into the heel of your hand. You could use your other hand. You could do one side at a time. That's an option here. You can also, if you've got blocks, you can move towards your wall. And again, I do like them at that kind of a slanted angle. I'll show y'all guys the baseboard in case you have a baseboard. If I can actually do the baseboard, which I don't think I can, but I'll try. Are y'all listening to me? I can't see you, so I have no idea. Is anyone there? Just kidding. So watch. Hands here, if you're using the block, same thing. Heel of your hands in, tips of your elbows back towards the wall. Maybe you push down and come onto the top of your head here. And then tuck your elbows in. Try to move your chest, tips of your elbows to the wall. You could do it that way. Okay. Now, say you say, well, I want to see what the baseboard and the fingertips are. Challenging is what it is. So, and you probably have a larger baseboard, but if you're doing it with the baseboard, look, you put your fingers, your thumb, your index finger there on your baseboard like this. 
And it's almost like my hands are up the wall. Can y'all see that? So it's index finger and thumb on my baseboard. And if you've got a thicker baseboard than this, it works great. But it gives you that kind of that external rotation. So you press back and down on that baseboard here and then make your way up. Yeah, that's another option that we've never done in the studio, but it works good. Blocks, hands under your blocks, blocks to the wall, top of your head touching the wall, your head's between your blocks, bend your elbows, put your hands on your blocks, and that may be as far as you go. Or come lying on your mat, take your arms over your head. Everyone looks excellent. Excellent. Looks very, very good. Very good. Yeah, and I see set the rolling over a chair. That's an option. If you have a chair or anything, even your sofa, you may be able to roll over the back edge of your sofa. Careful. So when you guys come down from your back bends, stay down. And if you've used the strap or whatever you're using, you can just put that to the side. Ah, I'll come flat, arms out, knees up, knees to the left, elbows forward, back to the arms down, left shoulder blade to the left, twist to the right, and hold that right knee down, reach out to your right, twist your chest to the right, so this outer part of that right rib rotates down, Towards the mat. So you're just doing a spinal twist. Knees to the left and you twist to the right. Yeah, knees to the left and you twist your spine to the right. Very good. You can also, as you draw that top knee down, see if you can pull the outer hip away from your hand that's holding your top knee. So this outer part of that top knee does this. And then that gives you a deeper twist to the right. Okay, come up and over. Take your knees to the right and you twist to the left. Remember, you've got to lift your shoulder blade up and move it out to the right. So you do have to move it. If you think chest, breastbone remains up to the ceiling, shoulder blade spread away from the spot. Yeah. And then once you get the knees over, you can hold the knees down and really draw that hip down and back. So your top hip has this this action where it pulls back as you twist. So the more this pulls back, the deeper you twist. The deeper the thick ribs twist. Ah, man, what in the world? <laughs> Come back to the center. Very good. Come on to your knees. So you're, you're still remaining on the mat. Let's cross the right outer ankle bone over the left. Have space. We're all going to do sit the potting and at some point. And then go ahead and lift that left foot up. And you see how the left shin is, a left calf is parallel. I'm going to not lift the chest up. I'm going to curl in. I'm going to make the arms long and interlace them around the back of that left thigh. Now bend your elbows out. Keep your right buttock flesh on the mat. So it has to come from here to here. And then draw your left shin bone or your left knee in. But press your left shin bone towards your left foot. Press your left shin bone towards your left foot. Good. You can even straighten. You can straighten that left knee now. Pull the left leg in, but press into the hands. So if you're going to break the interlace, bend the knee, release your interlace, bring the foot down, switch side. So cross over opposite. We've done this before where you've got that L shape here. That stays. So if you were, everyone do that. Make an L shape with both of your hands. Take both of your hands right to the top of your legs and draw down. You see your left knee should not be here, but here. Open up your hip. Now, keep drawing your femur bone towards your feet and lift your right foot up. Press your femur bone opposite of your chest. Now, maintain this. Press your outer left ankle into your right thigh. Hook your fingers behind. Bend your elbows out. 
Now pull your your legs in, but again, we go back to not lifting the bottom up. Roll the bottom down and bring the knees in. And keep that right foot and right calf parallel. Open your chest. Pull in, but take your thigh bones away. Now straighten your right knee. Draw your right leg in, but watch my right hip. Draw it away from you. Pull it back away from you. And then exhale, bend the knee and release. Bring the feet down. Ah, very, very good. I'm going to show y'all one more and y'all watch, and then we'll do Supta Parangustasana. Let's see if I can get it. I think we're going to go opposite, but watch, 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 watch. So let's see. I have to twist. I have to move my chest back up towards the ceiling. Keep watching me. Bend the top leg and the outer foot. Keep watching. Rotate to the mat. And then I hold the foot against the floor or against the mat. I'm going to stretch my bent knee back, bend the knee deeper, grab the foot, pull that so that that bottom knee is straight down towards the wall. Keep watching. Twist. So bring your chest back up to the ceiling. So bend your knees. You're on your mat. You can bend your knees. Put your feet on the mat. Bend both of your knees up towards your chest. Take your knees over to your left. Take your knees to your left. Take your knees to your left. Now adjust your chest. So bring your breastbone back up towards the ceiling first. Do that first. So rotate your chest up towards the ceiling. Now your right knee, bend it up into your chest. Grab your outer right foot with your left hand. Extend your right knee. Place your right foot on the floor, even the outer right foot. Now take your left knee and extend it back. Bend your left knee deeper. Grab your left toe. Now draw the left kneecap straight down. Twist to the right. So now here, rotate the back of your right shoulder and arm down. Roll your right hip down, guys. Roll your right hip down. You don't have to hold your left toes if you can't reach them. But take your outer right hip here and aggressively roll it down. That'll deepen the weight on your outer right foot. And then release and go opposite. So take your knees up and over to your right. Or wait, yeah, right. Hold them down. Move your breastbone back up. So don't let your breastbone move over to the right with you, but try to get it up towards the ceiling. And then you can very slowly straighten that top knee and ground the outer foot. So believe it's your left side. Ground your outer left foot. And you say, well, what's that? This. Ground that. It's almost like you're doing, y'all know sutta. We go, so that outer foot, open up your outer leg and ground your foot. Now you can bend your bottom knee, which is your left knee, and grab, or wait, right knee, and grab your foot. And you twist to your left. Try to bring the back of your left arm all the way down. Perfect, though. Perfect. And then exhale, release. Let's come in for Supta Padangustasana. So feet can be to the wall. And then if you've got your block, we'll use the block. <clears throat> now, I'm, I've got my knees bent and my feet to the wall, and I'll come here. And then I'm going to push into the wall to straighten the knees here. And when I do that, bring your thigh bones down. So not here. You don't want any space under the backs of your legs. Spread your shoulder blades. Spread your arm bones. Bring your block flat right outside of your right hip. It touches. Take your belt in your hand. Take your right knee. Bend your right knee. Let's go ahead and let's bring the strap around the base of the toe joint, right side, but bring this parallel, the calf parallel to the, to the mat. Everyone look, calf is parallel here to the mat, so don't straighten yet. But now, as you reach and pull into your strap, but push your foot into your strap as well. Now, keep your knee here and straight, straight. So you're not going to pull your right leg back to your chest. You're going to straighten it so your outer ankle bone lines up with your hip. 
Now pull down with your left hand, rotate the sole of your right foot to the left. I want you to lift your head and shoulders, reach up and grab the strap with your right hand really close to your foot. Open up your outer right foot, turn your right kneecap to the right. Now take your right leg out to the right, go very slowly, start to bend your right elbow, open up the back of your right arm. Take your left arm out to your side. Let's kind of heel toe, heel to our left leg, left foot to the left. Take your right foot, take your right hand, bend your elbow, try to get your right toes to the floor. Strain your right kneecap, everyone. Strain your right kneecap. Now, take any space out from underneath the back of your left leg. So if your left leg has space, I want you to really press through your foot and bring the left thigh bone down so that I will see no space. Bend your right elbow, guys. You have to use your hand and your arm. Carmen Drea. So your organs of action, your hand, your arm, you must use. See, you can't just use your leg or your feet or your hip. You've got to use, it's a full body thing. So use that arm. Good, good, good. Turn that right kneecap down towards the floor and try to reach through the back of your right arm. Now bring your right leg up very slowly. Don't move your left leg. Bring your right leg up. Switch the hand that holds your your belt and take your right leg. Now as we're here, we're not going to let it fly over real quickly. Turn the sole of your foot. Now left hand to your strap and go really slow, but use more so your left arm. Bend your left elbow and bring your right foot towards your left shoulder. So right leg to your left. Right foot towards your left shoulder. Go over opposite. So you're moving your right leg over. Keep your right buttock flesh on the mat. Keep your your left toe straight up towards the ceiling. Now bring your leg back and switch. Okay, so listen. You get more work here through via the piriformis when you try to keep this long, the buttock, and ground it so you're more here and not here. See? So... You want to use, you want to straight, you're trying to stretch that performance and the outer right leg. So when you turn the foot down, roll the hip down, and then begin to use your arm. Begin to use your arm more than anything else. So move your block over to your outer left hip. Make sure the back of your right leg is grounded. Bend your knee and take your strap around the base of your toe. Now we're going to come here. Remember, bend knee here. So you've got that uh, calf parallel and then straight. So we're used to doing this. We don't want to do that. You want to use this bone and bring it towards the wall. Here, press into your strap. Now watch the foot, sole of the foot. As I pull down with the right hand, it went where? To the right, here. So it should move out to the right. Reach up, grab really close. Control your right side. Don't worry about your left side as much. Control your right side and use the back of your left arm. Left leg out to the left. Left leg to the left. Guys, get your left hand close to your left foot. Kind of wiggle it along your strap. And again, go to using your hand and your arm. So that's your organs of action. So your feet, your legs, your hands, your arm. Yeah, organs of action. So make sure you're using your arm. Bring your left thigh bone to the back of your left leg. Now bring your left leg up and switch the hand that holds your strap. Remember, I want you to pull down so the sole of your foot is turned over towards the floor. So your left leg goes to the right. Good. Keep your bottom on the mat. Can you guys get your left thigh bone to come to the back? Excuse me, to the back of your left leg. Your left femur bone to the back of your left leg strongly, very strongly. Great, 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 great. Now bring your leg back. You shouldn't lift your bottom, but bring your leg back to the center. Very good. And then release the strap. Stay, stay where you are. 
Go ahead and take your belt around your right foot once more. Stretch your right leg up. This time, we're going to lift our head and lift our shoulders. You've got both hands to your strap. Do a floint with your right foot. And let's pull our nose to our knee. And let's see if we can hold this a moment. So here, you can use your strap. Or you reach up and you can grab your foot. You have interlaced around the foot. Straighten the knee. Pull the right leg slightly to the right. And reach through your toes. Reach through your toes. Reach through your toes. Your elbows can bend. Touch the nose to the knee. Now lower the head. Lower the shoulders. Widen the elbows. Bring your right thigh bone to the back of your right leg. Try to press your right sit bone to the wall. And now deepen this. Pull the leg in closer. Rotate the hip away. Bring the back of your left leg grounded. And then release. Bend the knee and release. Perfect. Bend your left knee. Take your strap around your left foot, base of your toes. And again, we go here and here. And then press up into your strap. Do that point, straight knee. Roll your outer left hip away from you. Now lift up. But I see space underneath some of the right legs. So bring your right thigh bone down. And your flexibility will be different between your left and your right side. Lift your head, lift your shoulders, and pull your nose to your knee. If you go all the way up to your hands to your foot, you can interlace around your foot and then deepen that. Wind the elbows and pull the leg in. Now, get your thigh bone opposite of your chest. That's where the work is, is to move the femur bone away from you. That's the top of your left leg. Move it away. Pull in more. Use your hands. Use your core. Pull the leg in closer. Now lower your head and lower your shoulders, but keep that leg in close. Now do a dorsiflex where you're trying to reach your five left toes over your head. Strain your kneecap so your knee pit, which is here, knee pit, fully spread. All four corners of your left knee pit open. All four corners of your left right knee pit open. Good. And then exhale, release. Bend the knee and release the strap. Perfecto. Go ahead and you stay supine, but let's cross our legs at our mid shins, whichever leg you want in closest to the spine. But don't let your knees spread out like this so your feet can go over to the outer edge like mine are doing. And see how, so from here... See how much you can take them to the outer edge. Then that outer hip here starts to open up. You see, so here you can see the wrinkles in the pink hands. Now think of that. That's the skin, flesh, muscle. Is That's the same. That It's doing that. So this, my clothes, is kind of representing what's going on underneath. So what's going on with the skin, uh, the muscle. Yeah. So I want to take that, those wrinkles out. Yeah, and you use your hands. If it didn't work, you use your hands and smooth them out like that. Danny. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to take the leg that's closest to me. And for me, that's my right leg. And I'm going to bring that outer right foot over the inner left knee. And I'm going to try to let that outer right hip buttock here, lower buttock, relax. And again, if you want to use your hand, you can kind of iron right at the hip flexor. This is not where we want to be. We want to try to open up, getting that outer right knee closer to the mat. Now, can you guys wiggle your right foot a little bit to the left? And then draw down, trying to get this from here to here. And then release, bring your right foot back down, bring your left up or, or switch, whichever you had on top, bring it opposite. And then again, with your hand, you can kind of iron that flesh there. Just think about, it's like your hip point and your femur bone go opposite directions here. So I'm trying to create space here. You see, there's nothing wrong with using your own hand to do that. Here and so see if you can wiggle that left foot over a little bit deeper. 
Ah, and then go ahead and bring your bring your left leg down. Now bring the soles of your feet together. Relax around pubic bone. Your arms can go out to the side. Your palms can go up towards the ceiling. And if you want to take a few moments here, you can close your eyes and just take a few moments to rest. Ah, very good, guys. And then let's bring our knees together from here and the soles of your feet onto your mat like this. And then you can lift up and tuck the tailbone and tuck the sacrum here. And let's bend that right knee and hold the right knee, hold below the right knee here. Extend your left. Take your right knee kind of out to the side. It's kind of pulling that um, knee and, and femur bone down. And then you can bring it to relax and let's do our ankle roll. You've got 60 on each side, so 30 clockwise and 30 counterclockwise. Hold at your shin bone and avoid swinging your knee, uh, swinging your shin and swinging your knee and your hip. So isolate this to just the ankle and take as much time and be as aware as you can be. Go very slowly. So hold below the knee at the shin bone. Otherwise, it'll be more of this. So in order to avoid that, because really that I'm not, I'm not rotating my ankle. I'm just kind of swinging my leg around. So if I hold, stabilize the knee and the hip, and then make that full roll, counterclockwise and clockwise. And then when you get done on your right side, make sure to be 60. And then I noticed Dan took a bathroom break. He took some sort of... Ah, blow the knee. When you switch, remember to pull it out to the side like we did on the first side like this and then bring it back and then do the ankle roll. So remember when you do switch to your left, you're going to take it out wide, really trying to spread at that uh, back of your waist here and then you let it come in and then you roll in a circle. Don't swing. You roll. Get back to work. Oh, man, there's that episode of Andy Griffiths where um, and something's wrong with the jail, so they have to send the prisoners to Aunt B's house, but it, it's um, Otis, who's the line, right? So she puts him to work. Like, she instead of letting him lay around in her home jail, she puts him to work, and she finds him hiding in all these places. And so she sneaks up behind him, and she just says, Get to work. And so that's what I'm going to say for Dan. Get to work, Dan. She finds him in all kinds of in the laundry and hiding on the back porch. She finds him everywhere and pops up on him. And she's just, that's her thing. Get to work. Ah, so when you get done with your left side, you can stretch both of your legs out. Or Shavasana, so if you want your feet um, to your wall, that's good. If you don't, you can take your legs up the wall. You can use a blanket under the back of your head. Take your arms out pretty wide, so not here, but get them out there wide. Back of your hands down, some sides of your hands to the floor. Shoulder blades away from the spine. Or Shavasana. So any way that you would like to take Shavasana, you can. And I said before, but if you have your own um, Shavasana music that you would like to play or listen to on your own, you can do that. 
but to be as comfortable as you can be for Shavasana. Even lay in the chair, on the sofa, on the bed. <laughs> Megan, your doggy wants to take Shavasana too. You can take Shavasana, doggy. <laughs> and once you come down for Shavasana, relax. Let every muscle, every bone, and every organ The backs of your hands should become very heavy. Your eyeballs become heavy and they move away from your eyelids. Relax the abdominal area. Relax the throat, the teeth. Relax the upper and the lower jaw. At your legs. In your knees, your shins, your feet, your ankles. Let your brain relax. Let it move towards your yoga. movements in your fingers and in your toes when you as you exhale the breath slowly in the elbows bring your hands to your belly or to your heart you can stretch your arms over your head for full body stretch reach into your fingertips Side body with an exhalation of your breath and very slowly bend your knees one at a time. You can bring your mat onto the wall, the floor. You can bring your knees into your chest, wrap your arms around your knees in any movement side to side or front to back. And then roll over onto your right side here and hold in a fetal position with your right arm or your right hand to support your head. And then bring yourselves up seated using your left hand against the mat or the floor. 
any seated position that you would like and your hands can rest at your legs or maybe keep your heart center, thumbs to your third eye. Keep your eyelids heavy and closed down. Take a moment in silence, honoring the true self. Guruji would instruct us to raise the chest, to raise the sternum, and extend the cervical neck and to make the head straight to see what freedom comes to our mental state. Thank you guys very, very much. Namaste.